All right, we're back ranking some more Premier League players. This time, Premier League wingers. I've got 40 wingers to go through. I'll pick two from each Premier League team to represent them on this tier maker. Now, there are a few repetitions from the fullback episode because, obviously, formations change from team to team. Some teams don't play with wingers. Some teams don't play with fullbacks. Some teams play with wingbacks. So that's why there are some wingbacks in this episode that also featured in the fullback episode because that's the most representative for both teams in each positions, if you get what I mean. So, for example, Alfie Doughty is also in this tier maker because he's playing as a left wing back for Luton this season. Let's get into this. Um, if you disagree, let me know down in the comments. I'm always up for a better healthy discussion. Um, if you agree, let me know what you agree with. Any underrated players, let me know as well. And if you do enjoy, please hit that like button and subscribe. The tiers are world class. Top tier does the job. Average and subpar. Starting off, let's start with let's start with Luton. Why not? We have Alfie Doughty and Og Bene, who both featured in the fullback episode. Um, <coughs> by definition, Alfie Doughty is not top tier, but he's probably top. But does the job or close to it? I rate Alfie Doughty so highly. Um, funnily enough, against Sheffield United, he was not great whatsoever. Actually, for the um for the third goal Sheffield United scored, he was probably at fault for it. But um. As a whole season, his attacking output is absolutely brilliant. Defensively, he's very hard to get past as well. A very well-rounded player is Alfie Doughty, especially offensively. And Ogbene... Um, sorry, I'm going to change average to OK. Because I'm not going to put Ogbene in OK. I'm going to put him in does the job behind Doughty. I think average was a bit harsh. I'm going to change that to OK. Doughty and Ogbene does the job. They both do the job for Luton. They're decent. Let's move to um, to Bragan, Simon Adingra and Kaderu Matoma. I think Adingra is probably does the job. Not ahead of Doughty. In between Doughty and Ogbene for me. Um, Adingra is a really, really pacey, uh, really, really direct winger. Um, he provides a lot of attacking output for the multiple number nines, whoever Brighton decide to play with, whether, as, whether that is Danny Welbeck, Evan Ferguson, or Jao Pedro, um, Simon Adingra. He can play with any number nine he wants, and Karim Matoma can do it all himself. He's close to world-class Karim Matoma, but he's not quite there yet. I'd put him top tier, but what a player he is. Just coming back from the Asian Cup, and you could already tell the difference he made against Tottenham on the weekend. Um, obviously, they lost, but... I think just going forward, he provides a spark that Brogan have been missing for quite a while now with him away at the Asian Cup. Let's move on to Palace. We've got Jordan Ayew and Michael Elise. Jordan Ayew, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest. Um subpar. He, he's past it. Uh, I'm gonna have to be honest, he, he is past it. I used to rate Jordan Ayew, but this in this day and age, I just I, I don't really think I can give him the flowers. Um Palace need better. Um, they need better badly. If they decide to sell Elise in the summer, um, that could give, give them some... That, that could... Sorry, I just choked on my words. That could give them some funds to um, split the money and go onto a right... To buy a right and a left winger. Not Obviously not to the magnitude that West Ham did with Declan Rice, but a bit similar into splitting the funds really, really smartly. Um, Palace never do well with that. And I think selling Elise could provide benefit for both of the wings um, in the long term because Michael Elise is top tier. For me, I still prefer Matoma, but um, I'd love Elise at United. Um, it, it, we've been linked with him heavily. He's a lifelong United fan. I think with Elise, his injury issues are obviously a big thing, um, but I think Palace have handled his journey horribly, I mean, especially Rory Hodgson, who, against all medical staff orders, continues to force him back. Um, but as a player, very, very direct, very quick, very smooth with ball at foot. Brilliant, brilliant player is Michael Elise. And still so young. All right, we've got 40 of these to get through. We've got to rattle through some. Let's go to Burnley. Where's the other Burnley winger? The Burnley wingers, we've got uh, Goodmanson and Ogabear. Sorry, <laughs> just their championship level, which means they're subpar. Let's go to um, Everton. Jack Harrison, Dwight McNeil. Dwight McNeil does the job behind the Dingra ahead of Ogbene. Jack Harrison, okay for me. Okay. Um, let's go Sheffield United. We have James McAtee. Um, here we've got James McAtee. And where is Ben Burrison? Diaz, there he is. 
James McAtee and Ben Burris and Diaz. James McAtee just scored a penalty against Luton. Um, but apart from that, he's on loan from Man City. He's a young, promising player. I think for what Sheffield United need, he is bottom of does the job. I think McAtee is okay. Um, ben Burris from Diaz. More than does the job. He's probably better than Ogbene. I rate Ben Burris and Diaz. Obviously, he played for Blackburn for quite a while and... Yeah, you know, he, he's had an interesting career, Ben Broken Diaz. Um, but I think for for Sheffield United there and what for what he's provided in the Premier League so far this season, he does the job. Um, I could get these tiers mixed up. My head could be absolutely lost here, but um, I think he deserves to go there. Let's go Chelsea. Raheem Sterling, Cole Palmer. Let's go Raheem. Raheem is so tough because obviously we know that he's a Premier League cult hero. Really, he he's done so much for for the league, um, but. This season, he hasn't been all that. He's had purple patches, but he hasn't been all that. I think it would be disrespectful not to put him top tier, but at this point in time, I can't put him above Matoma or Elise. And, and Cold Palmer, I accidentally just call him Cold Palmer. That's so horrible. I can't believe I've done that. Cold Palmer um, is probably ahead of Elise, in my opinion. I hate when people say Cole Palmer's a pen merchant because he isn't, I think, in general play. The amount of big chances he creates and how smooth he is with ball at foot. He's, he reminds me of almost a bit of a taller Phil Foden, if that makes sense. I think he, he is just absolutely brilliant and um, I rate him really, really highly. Talking of Phil Foden, let's move to Man City. Phil Foden and Jeremy Docker were the two I've chosen to represent City. Uh, Foden's world class, there's no debating it. Um, Phil Foden, I hate the fact he plays for Manchester City because... He is simply one of my favourite players to watch in the world. How smooth he is. Arguably, in terms of what, like visibility, how nice he is to watch. Probably my favourite player to watch in the league. I love Phil Fogan. His versatility. He is the smoothest player you will ever lay your eyes on. What an incredible player he is. Can play the number 10. Can play the right wing. Can play the left wing. Can play as the false nine. Um, brilliant is Phil Foden. And Jeremy Doku. I'd go top tier. I'd probably go... Ahead of Raheem, behind Elise. Doku did have that purple patch. He's fallen off a little bit lately. And I'm, I'm actually surprised that Pep insists on going with Doku. Because the way City play, they don't necessarily they don't necessarily have really direct wingers that cut in and take the game on. It's basically, player goes down wing, cuts it back to midfielder, cuts it back to centre-back, go again. Maybe go for the switch. But it's a very, very passive style of play until they get into the final third. And that's where they create their magic through a Kevin De Bruyne or a Phil Fogan or a Julian Alvarez. So, Doku's an interesting player. Why Pep keeps picking him? I agree with it. I think Doku's brilliant, but I feel like Grealish suits his system far more. Um, but yeah, Doku, top tier. I rate him. He's still so young, I, I think. God, it'd be embarrassing if Doku's... Sorry. Let, let's just quickly... He is 21. I, I had a... I just thought for a second. Imagine he was 27, and I'm just saying, oh, look how young Doku is. Oh, that would have been not good. Salah. Um, well, who's the other Liverpool winger I've got? It's Diaz, isn't it? Salah and Diaz. Salah's world class. I've, I've probably got to put him above Foden. And Diaz is top tier. I've got to put him... in between Elise and Doku. I rate Elise really highly, by the way, in case you can't tell. Um, as well as Matoma. He's still, up top, uh, he's still top of top tier. Um, I mean, we know what Salah can do. Goal-scoring machine, creation machine, smooth as it gets. No Salah, take a bow, what a player, one of the greats. Uh, Louis Diaz, very, very direct. He's very, very explosive. He loves taking the game on. He's so dangerous and brilliant cutting in on that right foot off the left wing. And Diaz, when he gets going, is a world-class player. Uh, let's go Villa. Uh, really hard to pick the two for Villa. <laughs> But I've gone with John McGinn and Leon Bailey. Leon Bailey's been holding Diaby out the team for the most part. And uh, John McGinn's played majority of the season, whether it's centre mid or on the left wing. Let's go with Leon Bailey to start. And I don't care what anyone says, I think he's top tier. And if we're going off this season, uh, I've got to mix it between this season and, and all time, which is why I'll put him bottom of the top tier behind Sterling. But there are so many good wingers in this league. What a player. I mean, what a player. He's so direct. He can play anywhere across the front three. He can play as a number nine. He can play on either wing. And he is just, every time he comes off the bench, if it's for five minutes, half an hour, whatever, he will get a goal contribution. And um, Emery's realized he's probably better than Diaby at this current point in time. And Diaby still needs to nurture a little bit. 
and, and Leon Bailey is that guy to just take Villa forward down the wing. What a player he is. And, and John McGinn. I wouldn't go, oh, God, I could put him top tier. I don't want to go too many top tiers, but my God, he's good. Um, John McGinn above Leon Bailey. At, oh, fuck, he's going above Sterling. I don't care. I, I don't care. I'm sorry, but John McGinn this season, whether he's playing... If he plays center mid, he dictates the midfield alongside Douglas Louise. If he plays on the wing, he creates so many chances. And he can just play... He can even play anywhere across the front three. I've seen Villarre deploy him as a false nine at times. So versatile. So incredibly underrated. I love John McGinn. Let's go United. Marcus Rashford and Alejandro Ganacho. If you thought I was putting Anthony in this tier list, you were sadly mistaken. Rashford's got to go top tier. I'd probably put him above Sterling. Um, I think he's been slightly better than Sterling this season. He obviously had a really, really bad patch, Rashford, but... I think Sterling did too, and I think Rashford's starting to get his goal scoring back. Rashford and Sterling haven't been up to standard for a bit now, but if we look back at Rashford last season, it was world class. So we've sort of got to mix that in. Um, but this season, he's probably been okay, or even subpar. Uh, Ganacho, for me, he's top tier. For me, he's better than Doku. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I've, I'm going to put Ganacho there. He's still, what, 19, 20 years old. Incredible. There's always going to be United bias come out in these videos, but I love Garner with a passion. Um, what a player. So, so exciting. He's taken his game to a whole other level on the right-hand side as opposed to the left, and he's such a good player to watch. Let's go West Ham. Jared Bowen and Mo Kulis. Jared Bowen, I'm going to put him ahead of Diaz behind Elise. There are so many players in top tier at the moment, but there are a lot of top tier wingers. Um, yeah, I mean, Bowen's been playing number nine a lot of this season. This is, again, a repeat from the striker video. I had Bowen as West Ham's striker in the ranking strikers, but I think I've got to put him in, in the wingers video. Um, I mean, playing, they've been playing Ward-Prowse on the wing lately, and there's no chance I'm putting James Ward-Prowse in there, or, or into this team maker or, as a winger. Um, but Bowen, I mean, so good. Anywhere across the front three. Same goes for Mo Cutis. I'm going to put Kulis ahead of Bowen because I prefer to, I prefer watching him play. I think Bowen's a little bit smoother, a little bit more clinical, but I think it's a, I'll probably will put Bowen ahead of him then. But I think Kudus, his pace, his agility, his directness, and his promise as well is just through the roof. And I, I would take Kudus in a heartbag at United. I couldn't believe we didn't get him in. Out of all the t teams in the world that could have gotten him, I I I'd say Bayern Munich would have taken him. I'd say Real Madrid would have taken him. But out of all the clubs, West Ham somehow got him. Just incredible. What a player. He's not to the level of Dimitri Payet in terms of how is he at West Ham. But Mo Kugis is a player that should be at a really big European side. And he's just balling out at the Hammers. Let's go Newcastle. Interesting one, this. Miguel Almiron and Anthony Gordon. Uh, Almiron this season, I'm going to be brutally honest. He's okay. Um... Last season, he was he had a good first half of the season, but fell off a little bit, fell away a little bit. Um, Almiron just this season hasn't really got going. Newcastle fans have been calling for him to get dropped. And with Harvey Barnes back in the in the picture, could be interesting to see if Almiron's minutes are affected. Let's go Anthony Gordon now. He is top tier this season. Um, above Bailey, above Sterling, above Rashford. Not above McGinn. I rate John McGinn really highly, and I'm going to put Anthony Gordon there. So, so good is Gordon. His pace and his ability to cut off his right foot is so impressive. He's been playing number nine a bit for Newcastle when Isaac and Wilson haven't been available. He can do a job there, and he fights more than anyone ever does for Newcastle. Um, I mean, Newcastle fans demand your fight for the badge. They're the fan base that demand it more than anyone else. And Anthony Gordon had about a 10% chance of playing on the weekend against Forrest, and Eddie Howe lied about him in his press conference, um, and he ended up starting and making a big contribution. Not any goal contribution, but he just had a really good game. Fighter for the badge, brilliant player, pisses off opposition teams. I love players like that. Let's go Wolves, Pedro Neto and Frank Hee Chan. Pedro Neto, uh, for me, above Leo Bailey. Actually, no. Bottom of the top tier. I, Pedro Neto is the right winger I want at Man United. If I had to pick out of a right winger to take, it's Pedro Neto, who's Premier League proven, 23 years old, a direct right winger who's got a brilliant left foot, a really good right foot to cut back. Um, rate Pedro Neto really highly, and Wang Hee Chan can go just behind him. Um, I don't think there's a big difference. Very, very hard to separate, but uh, I think I'd put him there. 
If you're wondering why guys like Rashford and Sterling are above them, it's a mix of all time, what they did last season and in the Premier League overall and this season. It's hard getting the mix right, but obviously if we're talking have Neto and Huang been better than Rashford and Sterling this season, the answer would be yes. But um, I think overall, that's probably the fair spot to put them. I do rate them really highly though. Morgan Gibbs-White and Anthony Alanga. Gibbs-White does the job. He's above Burris and Diaz. He's above McNeil. He's probably... He's he's below a dinger for me. I think Gibbs-White goes there. Pisses me off massively. Don't like him as a United fan, but what can you do? I and mean, he's actually a United fan himself, but um, he pissed me off about a month ago when we played them. Um, nah, he's a good... He's an all right player, though. He, he does the job again. And Alanga probably also does the job. He's probably above a dinger. He's... I mean, he, United was just too big for him. And I always loved Alanga. Alanga will always be one of my favourite players, except when he started dancing in the dressing room after that Vegas last month. Um, that didn't bother me too much. But um, so good. He, he was being deployed as a number nine, as a right winger at United. And he, was being, he kept, being, kept on being playing out, played out of position by Ralph Ranick. And I think not only Steve Cooper, um, but Nuno's really going to log out of him at Forest. And... He's just got so much confidence, so much freedom to take the game on and and just be the face of that forest side. Um, Alanga is brilliant in my opinion, and in fact he can go above he can go above Doughty. I rate him really, really highly. Uh, let's go for Arsenal. Saka and Martinelli. Saka probably goes top of. Oh, he's probably is is he world class? Yeah, he is. I put him behind Salah and Foden, but Saka probably is world class to be honest. Absolutely brilliant, is he? Um, he's he went through a bit of a an off patch in form over the past few uh, over the past month or so, but all great players go through that. He's finally starting to hit his straps again, and he's looking brilliant. Every bit of what we expect Bakayo Saka to do. Gabriel Martinelli has basically had the same story as Saka this season, same story of Arsenal um, as Arsenal, just a bit of a form slump. And then coming back up and just really providing his output for the team. Um, I mean, his cut, his his right foot shot off the left wing is one of the most attractive things to watch in the Premier League. Um, except he has an Arsenal shirt on. Gabriel Martinelli for me probably goes above Garnacho. Probably above Diaz. I put him in between Kudus and Diaz. Yeah, I'll go there. Uh, let's go Spurs. Kulisevsky and Son. I'm going to put Kulosevsky in top tier behind Pedro Neto and Huang. And I'm going to put Son in world class in between Fogan and Saka. What a player Son is. Um, number nine, left wing, right wing, does the lot. Left foot, right foot, brilliant finisher. He does the lot. Hyungman Son, captain of Tottenham Hotspur. What a role he's taken on this season and how good he's been in it. Um, especially with the absence of Harry Kane. And Kulosevsky, he's been a bit off this season, I won't lie, but I still think he provides more than enough for Tottenham. Whether Even if he doesn't provide a goal contribution, he provides a lot in general play, and um, I think that's really, really important. Great player is Kulosevsky. Let's go for Brentford. Brian and Bermo and Yuan Wissa, uh, who have been... They've actually been playing up top in Ivan Tony's absence, and Bermo hasn't been back in the team since Tony's been back. Uh, and Bermo, for me, is top tier. He is... Above Neto and Huang, I think. Not quite above Leon Bailey, but I actually probably is actually. I'll put, I'll, I'd put him Buemo above Bailey. I really, really rate Brian and Buemo. Um, really smooth. He can use both feet, but especially that left foot is darting. And Yoan Wister probably does the job. He's probably a Harry Gibbs White. Below a Dingra. I'm happy with that. Fulham and Bournemouth remaining. Let's go for Willian and... Wilson, Willian, does the job at this stage in his career. Probably top of that tier. At this stage in his career, I think Willian is doing as well as he can do. He's a bit older. He's that experienced head. But some of he, his key passes have been the best we've seen in the league all season. Really, really great right, Willian. And Wilson probably goes in okay in between Jack Harrison and Miguel Almiron. Uh, then we go for, uh, I believe this is Sinistera and Semenyo. Let's go for... Semenyo, he's probably done the job quite well this season. Um, I'll put Semenyo behind Gibbs White ahead of Jack Harrison. Sorry, Dwight McNeil. And I will put Sinistera ahead behind Semenyo. Just right there. I'm going to quickly reshuffle here. I think McAtee can go down 
below. Yeah, he can go there. I'll put him too high. Um, Ogbene. I'll put... Oh, I should probably put Yamran up. Yeah, I'll put Yamran up. And yeah, I'm happy with that. All right, there you go. Well, according to me, the best wing is Mo Salah and the worst is Ogbear. Sorry, Burnley fans. I've absolutely toasted you in all these videos, but yeah, it's a staggy club. Um, yeah, thank you all for watching. Um, I hope you all have a good one. More team makers coming out soon, obviously. Um, lots more football content. It's subjective. Let me know your opinions down in the comments. I'll try to get to back to as many of you as I can. And, you know, like and subscribe if you enjoyed. I'll see you all next time. Cheers.